Carrie K here back with more Dirty Laundry and today we have Alec Empire of Atari Teenage Riot fame. Hi. Thanks for being on. Hey! We got in like, you know, very early in the morning, like five o'clock, something like that. You know, slept three hours or something. How did it go? <laughs> yeah, it was kind of okay, but I think the Usually, you know, we're used to like almost a riot at, at festivals, you know, when we turn up. Uh -huh. I think Coachella is, seems to me like very like more like laid back kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> so <laughs> it was probably very similar to what you saw <laughs> in 97. It was like a confrontational thing. Some people were like, oh my God, this is so angry. Why are you, you know, but it was good to play, you know, I mean, this is, a lot of the stuff that we do, we know that, if we, especially on a festival, you face a crowd, not all people who are there like are fans. Yeah. So you get people who check it out, they don't even know who you are, so in some situations. And for them, it's very often, holy, like this is, <laughs> <laughs> What's these happening? guys, like, you know, and because when we do, for example, noise stuff, it is like full on noise. I mean, it's not yeah. like, yeah, a little of noise here and you know, it's like war <laughs> so it, yeah. you know for some people it's it's very extreme you got the band back together after a 10 year or so split yeah what, what made yeah. you decide to get back together again that's the some people have misunderstood that okay. that isn't what happened um, it was actually uh, Hanin Elias the uh, girl singer, she asked if we want to play one show in London uh -huh. in May 2010. And I was, okay, like, why don't we maybe make peace? Because, like, the way things went at the end, I don't know if you know all the history, like, the, the last show we played at Brixton Academy in London, it was a, we played, like, for 30 minutes, we were very burnt out, Honey and Elias left the band on that day again, you know, I mean, you've, you've seen the band at back. That she wasn't on that tour either and stuff so yeah. it's like it was Atari was always chaos it was like always people come and go and sometimes it would be six people on stage sometimes it would be like uh, just three um, and you see it also I guess when you watch the video so um, on that day we were like so burnt out we toured like for three months or something and it, we took it kind of personal that she just didn't want to play that one last show <laughs> at the end of the tour. Why, did, why didn't she want to play? She was she just was, burnt out? Yeah, I guess. I mean, we all were. So, you know, a car crack was, we, we had problems with his health, you know, um, some some of like, uh, um, like, you know, I, I, I had a, <laughs> it was very funny because on that tour, I had, I went to a doctor and I thought I have a problem with my wisdom tooth. <laughs> but I didn't, and they gave me the wrong uh, medicine, like the wrong painkillers, and I had a root canal thing. So for oh weeks God. I was in constant pain, <laughs> like, and uh, so at that but show you we were. Up. Yeah, <laughs> of course, <laughs> we all. This is kind of like what we do. But, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so we played that show. It was like 30 minutes of like pure noise. It was crazy. Like some fans thought this is even crazier and harder than everything before. They totally loved it, and then others were, of course, very angry because we didn't even play one proper song. We just, uh, you know, <laughs> so they. I remember people ripping up the T-shirts, throwing, you know, "Fuck you guys!" <laughs> we came for something else. But but all the music critics said, you know, in, in England, "Oh my God, this was like the true confrontational show." You know, like this yeah. is yeah, blah blah blah. So. It became kind of legendary, but it was like the last time we played. So after that, we didn't speak for like almost ten years. Wow! Uh, because you know, then Kyle Crack died, the MC, and I didn't see it like that we should play again. To be honest, you know, I said this to her. I said she was like, "Look, but we kind of have to make up for that show." And I was okay. Why not try it? I was really on tour with uh, with the Elk Empire a lot. Uh, um, so I was like, we can do this one thing, but then it completely changed and we had a new audience there, everybody loved it, 
and then we just kept adding shows. So it was never really the idea to have this five-year plan or something. Yeah. It's, it's important to understand that because I was very skeptical about doing this <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah. But then, it, yeah, of course, because I don't, as a music fan, I'm very, I don't trust like reunions or things like that. But I think what, what was different about Titanic Ride was that it was not the past. It was like we got a new MC in, you know, um, who is not singing Kai Craig's lyrics, he, he was doing his own thing, spoke about our time now, and we started to updating the song. So very soon people started calling it a software update rather than a reunion, you know, <laughs> which is a different kind of thing. Yeah. Know? I just know when I saw Pixies, I did I missed a bit that spirit, like from when I, I was a huge fan, you know, so for me what made Pixies different from a lot of other bands was that extra, I call it the extra 10%, was that passion in the music and the way they performed. And the show I saw, I, I didn't get that. And when they say we just do it for the cash, I'm like, okay, it's almost like, I don't know, you, you, you have a relationship based on, yeah, what, what kind of money you have or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It immediately makes it kind of weird. It's the love out of it. You licensed a song to PlayStation commercial. Yeah, good example. Yeah, what, what, where did that money go? <laughs> <laughs> Can I say this? Oh, yeah, yeah, everybody knows now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we, uh, that was a thing uh, I, I kind of felt I had to do it. it yeah, it went to freeanons.org, which is like a fund set up to like a legal, like, you know, the, they pay lawyers. Uh, to defend anonymous activists who got in trouble in this case with Sony. So with who? With Sony, yeah. you know, when they hacked the PlayStation. So it was. This is like a perfect example of <laughs> how, how I approach things. Um, I had a problem with with them in in the 90s, where a song like somebody kind of took a song from us for an Asian commercial and um, I found out about this by uh, some guys who were doing a documentary about Nine Inch Nails while they were on tour. They were in a hotel room watching TV and they were like, oh, you know about this? What this was one, the commercial for? It was like Camp Potter ad. Okay. And somebody took a, a track of us, like just the beginning, like the beats, and just before it really starts with the vocals, the ad ended. Hmm. And I, I went crazy. They yeah. sent me VHS tapes of it as a proof and I was like how this is they thought they can get away with that it, we ended up in court it was a long battle it was very uh, yeah it was it's very hard you know if you fight a big corporation like this in court overseas like in Asia <laughs> it, it is very complicated and it, it got settled but I was never happy with the result because like to me it was like you can't just do that in the first place because especially with our music if it gets out of context, it kind of kills much more than just this one song or you're not happy with it being used or something like that. So it's almost like, for me, it's like almost no amount of money can repair that, yep. you know? So, okay, but th this is the way it ended. And for me, like an, a decade later, when, I mean, it's different people, of course, now, <laughs> it was like a little bit, I, you know, like a, I mean, anonymous, they said it was like epic trolling or something, <laughs> but it was like, you know, it's like, you kind of, okay, there's this opportunity, I put this track in, which is like the Occupy Wall Street kind of almost, I don't know if people call it like the anthem or something, because we spoke about a lot of these things, a lot of activists love that song, Black Flags, for its message, and, and WikiLeaks, and, you know, Anonymous, and all these people supported that, so, I was like, okay, if I sneak this in, <laughs> I can actually do something with it, like, and, and help those guys who helped us also. So I didn't think this would be public, but a lot of people just posted this and posted it. <laughs> and we got angry phone calls, but okay. <laughs> I guess I'm on another blacklist again. <laughs> What is your beef with 50 Cent? 50 Cent. My beef? Like yeah. what, what? Like what, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you have a beef with 50 Cent? 
uh, uh, you mean I, I don't it's, I said something once in an English uh, interview like uh -huh. um, in the UK I was very upset about these artists performing for Gaddafi but that was my personal opinion yeah. Beyonce 50 Cent all these uh, I was I mean you know where I come from Germany with the history you just don't perform for a dictator take the money while people are being slaughtered in the basement mm 